dear children now we will move on to the next topic of this chapter that is determination of equilibrium level of income or employment or output using keynesian approach how keynes has explained the determination of equilibrium level of income employment and output income or employment or output any way you can use using keynesian approach okay he has used two approaches to explain the determination of equilibrium level of income and employment and that is one is adas approach that is aggregate demand aggregate supply approach and the next one is saving investment approach so we will be discussing the equilibrium level of income and output theory by using these two approaches and this is one among the most important topics in the chapter now we will move on to the determination of equilibrium level of employment using adas approach the first approach that we are going to discuss is equilibrium level of income using aggregate demand and aggregate supply approach now for both the approaches i told you one is adas approach and the other one is saving and investment approach for both these two approaches uh, he has used the same assumption these approaches works under the same assumption he has used started his theory he has explained his theory based on certain assumptions i told you normally for the theories in economics we start the explanation using some assumptions now let us see what are those assumptions now prior to this assumption let us see the introductory part of this theory according to keynesian theory the equilibrium condition is generally stated in terms of ad and as according to keynesian economics equilibrium level is always stated in terms of aggregate demand and aggregate supply a point where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply now in microeconomics also you have learned the equilibrium price is determined at a point where demand is equal to supply just recollect all those things but we can't connect those two uh, we, we cannot relate the ex exactly we cannot relate what we have learned in microeconomics but you can just think of what you have learned in microeconomics so likewise keynesian theory has explained the equilibrium level of income based on the concept of equilibrium between aggregate demand and aggregate supply an economy is an equilibrium when ad is equal to as when aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply so keynes has explained his equilibrium level of income whenever you hear the word equilibrium that means both the sides should be equalized a state of balance between two components is known as equilibrium so here a state of balance between two components is aggregate demand and aggregate supply so according to keynes the equilibrium level of income or output or employment in an economy happens when aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply that concept is known as adas approach okay now an economy is in equilibrium when aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply so we know aggregate demand is c plus i and aggregate supply is c plus s the two components in a two sector economy two sector economy you know aggregate demand is equal to c plus g plus i plus x minus m keynes has limited it as two sector one is firm and one is household and made the equation as ad is equal to c plus i as is equal to c plus s income is used for both consumption as well as saving and as you know it is equal to y so we know ad is equal to c plus i and as is equal to c plus s therefore we can say the c plus s is equal to c plus i right so c plus s is equal to c plus i which means as is equal to ad now from this we can derive another approach of explaining the keynesian theory of income employment and output that is s is equal to i approach as c plus s as as c plus s is equal to c plus i s is equal to i that approach is derived from this equation thus 
Keynes has derived two approaches to explain the equilibrium level of income and employment that is ADAS approach and S is equal to I approach. What is S? S stands for saving and I stands for investment. So, saving is equal to investment approach. So, he has formulated two approaches to explain the equilibrium level of income and that is equilibrium level of income or output or employment theory they are ADAS approach and S is equal to I approach. This ADAS approach AD is equal to C plus I, C plus I approach AD is equal to AS approach and the next is S is equal to I approach. So, for class 12 syllabus you have to learn these two approaches, Keynesian approaches which determines the equilibrium level of income, output or employment. So, you have you now learn how S is equal to I approach has been derived. This is derived from as C plus S is equal to C plus I, S is equal to I. From that we have Keynes has derived the second approach. So, two approaches we have to learn S is equal to I approach, AD is equal to AS approach. Now, first we will move on to AD is equal to AS approach. Now, to explain the two approaches, I told you Keynes has formulated the basic assumptions. So, this assumption stands to be equal for both the approaches SI and ADAS. Now, let us see the assumptions. The theory is studied in the context of two sector economy, two sector economy, which are the two sector economy, firms and households are the two sectors in the economy, firms and households. He has limited his explanation to a two sector economy, two sector economy means what? The presence of firms and households, three sector economy means presence of government, household and firms. So, Keynes has limited his theory with a two sector model that is firms and household. Okay, C plus I where C refers to consumption expenditure of households, I represents investment expenditure of firms. Now, investment is fixed and autonomous, you know autonomous investment. It is fixed for a particular period of time and it remains to be the same at all levels of uh, changes. The investment remains to be the same and you have learned about autonomous investment curve. Do you remember that autonomous investment curve? Autonomous investment curve will be parallel to the x-axis, you have learned it, isn't it? So, once again you, are, uh, you just recollect what you have learned, it remains to be parallel to the x-axis, okay? So, autonomous investment, okay? Next, equilibrium and you know it is kept fixed for a particular period of time. Now, what period of time? Equilibrium output is determined in short run. So, Keynes has used which period of time you know when you learn the time periods in economics we have short run and long run and Keynes has used to explain his equilibrium output theory in the short run. Next one overall price level is also assumed to be constant. So, these are the basic assumptions in which he has tried to explain his theory of AD AS approach. So, assumptions once again theory is studied in the context of two sector economy, investment is fixed and autonomous, equilibrium output is determined in short run, overall price level remains to be constant in the economy. So, based on all these assumptions Keynes has tried to explain his AD AS approach of equilibrium income output or employment. Now, let us begin with ADAS approach. According to Keynes, equilibrium level of income in an economy is determined at a point where AD is equal to AS. You know because equilibrium means a state of balance between AD and AS two components. So, here AD and AS are the two components where consumption varies directly with the income, you know when the cons income increases consumption also increases and you know so many aspects regarding consumption, zero level of income there is a minimum level of consumption, when the income increases consumption increases but less than the increase in the income that is marginal propensity to consume, all these concepts comes under consumption and you very well know about all those concepts. Then investment is autonomous and AS is the 45 degree line. So, keeping all these things in mind, we are going to start with ADAS approach. 
okay so investment is fixed for a particular period of time as is a 45 degree line and as is equal to y you know how aggregate supply is equal to y once again i can remind you for production all factors of production are used like land labor capital and organization and the reward for all these are given in the form of income therefore we can say as is equal to national income or national output so as is a 45 degree line where as is equal to y now so keeping all these points in mind we are going to explain what is the first point equilibrium achieves where ad is equal to as then consumption is there because ad is c plus i as is equal to c plus s consumption is common in both consumption varies directly with the income you know different perspectives of consumption investment remains to be constant it is autonomous then as is a 45 degree line where as is equal to y now this is a table showing the ads approach the table showing ads approach now we can see what the table represents okay now here the first column of the table shows employment employment means what employment of resources labor is a resource which keynes has used in his theory so employment of labors at different levels are represented here and that is of least importance in this table but it is just given for your understanding then the main thing comes with the second one income income is given here income levels are 0 100 200 300 400 500 600 okay at different levels of income consumption is given see the first consumption here 40 what do you mean by that even at zero level of income there is a minimum level of consumption therefore 40 is the consumption for zero level of income then therefore we can say saving becomes minus 40 negative intercept of saving the minus 40 therefore c is 40 see now investment is kept fixed throughout and that is 40 right now ad ad is what c plus i what is c 40 40 plus 40 gives 80 c plus i then comes the next one for the next level of income what is c plus i 120 plus 40 will give you 160 likewise for all these you have to find out c plus i the values are 240 320 400 480 and 560 now next is as as you need not calculate because you know as is equivalent to y so see the values of y y means income as is equal to c plus s see whether it is correct or not 40 plus minus 40 will give you 0 next my 120 plus minus 20 will give you 100 next c plus s 200 plus 0 will give you 200 so with C pluses, we are getting the same value of Y. See the values of Y 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 and 600. Likewise, you are getting AS also as 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 and 600. Therefore, you need not calculate C pluses. Just look at the value of Y, you will get the value of AS. Now, see 1 by 1. So, our main aim is to explain the equilibrium. When is the economy reaching the equilibrium level of income using ADAS approach? According to ADAS approach, equilibrium level of economy is attained at a point where aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. So, you have to go to the remark and see where aggregate demand is getting equalized with aggregate supply. Let us see where is that. First remark, at zero level of income, what is happening? Aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply. 80 is greater than zero. Second level of income, 100 level of income. Again, aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply. Next, at 200 level of income, again, aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply. Again, at 300 level of income, aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply. Again, at 400 level of income, see, 400 level of income, aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. This is what I have written here. Aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. So, one conclusion you can write here. That conclusion is, at level of income, 
at level of income 400 aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply that is 400 is equal to 400 now see again next after 400 level of income 500 level of income aggregate demand is less than aggregate supply see again at 600 level of income aggregate demand becomes less than aggregate supply that is written here so aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply at 400 level of income this is what i have written at level of income 400 aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply that is 400 is equal to 400. This is where the economy is in equilibrium. Equilibrium level of income or output or employment happens in which level of income? 400 level of income. The same can be represented with the help of a diagram. You know how to draw an aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Now few points which you have to recollect. That is what I told you. If you draw, if you want to draw an aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve what has to be done aggregate supply curve always starts from the origin zero that is what i have drawn here aggregate supply curve see now next aggregate demand where do aggregate demand curve starts from it starts from the y-axis why because of the presence of autonomous consumption you know that consumption c plus i because in the c you know there is autonomous consumption therefore it starts from the y-axis so this is aggregate demand curve isn't it this is the aggregate demand curve so both aggregate demand curve and aggregate supply curve is intersecting at a point e so at point e aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply and if you draw a line to the x-axis you will get the equilibrium level of income so here equilibrium level of income is equal to o y any disturbance in the aggregate demand or aggregate supply can shift the income level from o y to either to left side or to the right side that you will be learning it in the next classes so Keynes has thus proved that an equilibrium level of income can happen when the aggregate demand is equal to aggregate supply. So, this is a point E where aggregate demand curve is intersecting the aggregate supply curve where AS curve I have drawn from 0 and AD curve I have drawn from the Y axis. This is a point of equilibrium point and from there if you connect to the X axis you will get OY as the equilibrium level of income. Now, next is adjustment mechanism what do you mean by this adjustment mechanism now you learned that equilibrium level of income is achieved at a point where ad is equal to as now what happens if ad is greater than as and ad is less than as because in the stable you have found these situations ad greater than as ad less than as now let us see what happens if such a situation comes in the economy will the economy get adjusted to that situation isn't it now you know that classical economist has given the explanation that an economy can work only at a full employment level no it can also happen at less than full employment level which you will be learning in the next classes in detail now adjustment mechanism what is this adjustment mechanism if ad is greater than as so first condition we have already learned ad is equal to as okay now if ad is greater than as aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply what do you mean by that if ad is greater than as it means total expenditure is high that means ad means what the people are planning to buy therefore their expenditure will be high total expenditure in the economy will be high ad aggregate demand definition you have to bring to the mind isn't it the total amount of final values of goods and final goods and services that people are planning to buy planning to buy means their expenditure total expenditure is high or we can write which means planned spending people are planning to spend i told you planned you have to use that ex ante planned spending is 
more than planned output. People are planning to spend more, planning to buy more than what is being supplied in the economy. So supply is less, demand is more. So people are planning to buy more and more than what is being supplied in the economy. That is the situation. That means inventory will fall below the desired level. Suppliers in the economy doesn't have that much to give in the economy because aggregate demand is high. That means inventory level has fall below the desired level. So what is the main aim? So if you learn like this, now aggregate demand is here and aggregate supply is low. Aggregate demand is higher, aggregate supply is low. That means, see, inventory is lying below but demand is more. Isn't it? Inventory will fall below the desired level. So what is our main aim? To raise the aggregate supply. Isn't it? So as to meet the aggregate demand. So what is the solution here? What is the adjustment mechanism here? What is the adjustment mechanism? Bring back the inventory level. Raise it and raise the employment level. Raise the employment level. Try to increase the supply. If the supply has to be increased, inventory has to be the stock has to be increased or employment has to be increased inventory has to be brought back that means employment level of the economy has to be increased now employment level is less employment level is less raise the employment level in such a way that it becomes equalized with the aggregate demand therefore we can say that economy now remains at equilibrium stage Therefore, if AD is greater than AS, it means that the inventory level has come down than the desired level. People are planning to spend more than what is being supplied in the economy. To find a solution for that problem, raise the employment level so that aggregate supply which is below here can be brought up in such a way that economy becomes back to the equilibrium stage where AD is equal to Yes, that is the adjustment mechanism. Now, similarly, when AD is less than AS, what happens if AD is less than AS? It means planned spending is less than what is being supplied in the economy. So, inventory is very high, supply is very high, but what people are planning to buy is very less. So there will be more possibility of stock in the economy that has to be reduced. So what is written here, which means planned spending is less than planned output. So inventory would rise more than what is required, more than what is required. So here what we have to do, bring down the inventory. So what is the adjustment mechanism that has to work here? Clear the unwanted increase in the inventory. That is what you have to do clear the unwanted increase in the inventory. Now the inventory is very high and demand is low. So if you are again increasing the employment, what will happen? Stocks will go on increasing. That is not profitable. Therefore, what has to be done? What is the adjustment mechanism here? Bring back, bring down or clear the unwanted increase in the inventory. So decrease the employment level. So to clear the unwanted increase in the inventory means what? You have to decrease the employment level. Decrease the employment of resources. Employment means what? employment of resources. If the employment of resources are decreased, output also will be decreased. So now what is the situation? AD is less and AS is high. So what has to be done in order to bring back to the equilibrium stage, AS has to be decreased. That means employment of resources has to be decreased. So when the employment of resources are decreased, when unwanted inventories are cleared, what will happen? AS will come down. When the employment of resources are decreased, AS will come down from here in such a way that AD becomes equal to AS. So when AD is less than AS, bring down the employment level in such a way that AD is equal to AS. This is the adjustment mechanism. So such an adjustment mechanism will work in the economy and that has to work in the economy to bring back the equilibrium situation. So Hope that uh, ADAS approach is very clear to you. Once again, economy will be in equilibrium. 
equilibrium level of income and employment is achieved where AD is equal to AS and if there is any difference in that if either AD is greater than AS or AD is less than AS adjustment mechanism will work in such a way that finally AD becomes equal to AS. Thank you.